All right, cool. Well, welcome everyone. This is our Friday product session. Uh, I'm Rich, this is Ryan, and today we are going to be uh, featuring some different soldering supplies and products uh, that we provide here at Music Medic for the band repair trade. We're also going to be using our oxypropane torch, so stay tuned and see what we can hard solder today. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, Ryan, is talk about uh, solders, fluxes, and cleanup. So yep. as far so we talked about soft soldering on Wednesday, but for hard soldering, it's a kind of a different animal. What are the different solders that we can use for hard soldering? Uh, yeah, that, we have a couple different types. Um, what I like to use is uh, we have three different types of hard solders uh, that we sell. We have a, an easy, uh, a medium, and then a hard. Uh, and it really has to do with the temperature at which it flows and it's able to be worked with. The easy temperature is, I think, right around 1300 degrees. Uh, maybe the, the medium is about 1350 and the, the hard is 1400. So it, it is, the hard uh, solder is much, much stronger. But honestly, for a lot of it, I use just the regular easy hard solder, which is the around 1300 degrees. Um, so and this is really what I like using. And this is what I use most of the time. Um, there is also this uh, silver solder paste, which actually has the flux mixed in. It's very easy to apply, especially if you're just doing small areas like soldering the bottom of a post, mm. you would apply that on, stick it on and, and just heat it up and it has everything mixed in. So this is a really convenient way. Um, we also have this which is probably very hard to see, uh, but we'll, we'll go to our ultra close up. But here it is. This is, now this is a flux core, correct, Rich? That's right. This yep. is a silver soldering um, uh, wire that has a flux core. So it's, it's, you don't have to add a separate flux. Um, you know, this is the Tix flux, which is what we use for soft soldering in order to kind of clean and prep the area. Uh, for hard soldering, I use a different flux, but this has that flux built into the core. So again, it is a lot like the, the paste box, paste um, solder being very convenient. So when they, so in general, the, the wire for hard soldering is a little bit thinner than the soft solder solder. Usually, yes. This okay. you can see, here's the soft solder wire compared to the hard solder wire. This is much, much thinner. And then as far as, let's just back up a little bit. As far as fluxes go, um, sure. the, we have a couple of different fluxes. Uh, and I'm not sure if we went over anti-flux on Wednesday. Can we just talk about the two soft soldering fluxes you use? And then we'll talk about the hard soldering too. Absolutely. So here, this is the Tix flux. This is what I use for all soft soldering. So this is soft soldering. Again, the two types of soldering, hard soldering and soft soldering. Soft soldering is, is much lower temperature. Uh, and by much lower, I mean like 400, 450 degrees. Hard soldering being much, much higher than that. Uh, but this is the flux that I like to use when I am soft soldering. Um, we, I also like to use this. This is the Stay Bright. Um, and that, for those of you who are just getting into repair, we have this kind of flux and solder kit from Stay Bright, and it's widely available. We sell it at Music Medic, but it's got that small reel of solder, and then it also comes with its own flux, which is pretty good. And then we sell the anti-flux, and I, can you talk about how to use that? Absolutely. Yeah, the anti-flux, if you, if you saw our video on Wednesday, you would have seen me uh do a very sloppy solder job right here okay <laughs> and you can see how this this solder is bulging and i've i've done two things i've used first off too much solder um added that and it just kind of dripped out um then what i would need to have really have done is added this tix anti-flux um what this does is this provides a barrier for the flux to not flow on okay so if i had cleaned this whole area up applied my, my post here, added this Tix anti-flux under here, okay, a little bit, added my flux from the top. Again, I'm using gravity to let that solder flow down. What would have happened is when that solder hit that Tix anti-flux area, it would have not have spilled out like this. So it would have made it a little bit cleaner, a little bit neater, and I really like using this, this Tix anti-flux, especially if I'm soldering on bare brass. That is the biggest thing is, is the solder will stick to bare brass. If it's lacquered, it's a little bit tougher for this solder to stick to that 
that um, that lacquered surface. But if it's a bare brass surface, um, it is very easy for that solder to stick to it. So anytime, anytime I am soldering on bare brass, I usually will use quite a bit of this Tix Anti-Flux. So, so yes. Very cool. So yes. we've gone over solders, fluxes. Tix fluxes, yeah, we, we that, so that's for our, our soft soldering. For hard soldering, what I really like using is, is this stuff right here. Uh, this is our creamy brazing flux. And if I show you kind of a, a nice little close up of that, how it is more of a paste, okay? It's not necessarily a liquid. Cool. Okay, so I, I really like this stuff. And this is what I will use when I'm doing my hard soldering. Okay. So now you have to kind of pre-mix that before you start using it? A little bit, yeah. Sometimes it does separate a little bit. It's like peanut butter. It's like all natural peanut butter. <laughs> uh, don't eat it like peanut butter. But yeah, you just kind of have to, have to maybe mix it up a little bit. Uh, use a little, you know, Q-tip or a, you know, old spring to apply it. Now, as far as we talked about this a little bit, but what are you using for hard soldering? So you, so what they can see is we have this kind of... A, uh fireproof bench here but yep. what is also the block that you're using um this is a uh, a honeycomb block that actually um uh, you know absorbs a lot of the heat and you can actually see it is if i can get the camera just right it is it's like a honeycomb it's it's you can see all the way through it these little these little holes that kind of as you can see go all the way through okay but this is what i will use a lot of times when i'm putting my parts on especially if i'm soldering on something you know, like your bench top. Okay, you want to be very careful. We have this kind of this cement board on top of our soldering bench, and then I will use this on top of that. The other nice thing about this is it has those holes you can use well, with binding wire, and you can actually bind your parts to this and jig them up so that it doesn't move as you're soldering. Um, another option for soldering is a soldering board like so, and you can see this one is well used, mm -hmm. uh, but this is good to put down um, if you, especially if you're soldering on top of, you know, a wooden surface, you know, like a bench top or a tabletop. Uh, and we have these in a couple of different diameters too, or, or dimensions. So you can use this for using larger parts and then you can use the honeycomb ceramic block, uh, for repairing small parts. Those are all things that are available on the website absolutely. now. And let's also talk about. Uh, cleanup. So if you're hard soldering, you're probably going to have a fair amount of cleanup to do afterwards. Absolutely. What are the couple of different things that they can use um, as far as cleaning up solder or cleaning up the body afterwards? Sure. I, I really, really like using these um, bristle discs. Um, and I like, as you can see, I stack them. They do come individually, uh, but I will go ahead and stack them on this and you can use any kind of you know rotary tool you can use a, a dremel you can use a fordham you can put it in a bench motor um, and this is really good for cleaning areas and it does come in a variety of different grits as you can see i have mine kind of laid out with all the grits uh, and when you buy i believe an assortment it comes in a container yeah, like so that. go ahead and give my close-up of that yeah so we have it comes in a container like so with you can see an assortment of the most, these are the most commonly used bristle discs. Um, and then it does come with the, the threaded mandrel as well. So you can apply them um, and stack them. Now that's, those, those are one inch diameter, Ryan. And I also have here some three quarter inch diameter bristle discs. They're a little bit thinner and softer. Is there an area that you're gonna use these versus the, the thicker, wider ones? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, normally I will use the, the larger ones, but in tighter areas, you know, getting around posts, get around braces, I will switch to the, the smaller ones. And it's the same. So the yellow one uh, for the smaller disc is the same grit as the larger yellow one. And I think these vary in grit from, uh, I think they go down as low as 36 and yes. they go up into the hundreds uh as Absolutely. far as range goes and then we also have some polishing wheels if you want to show them the these are knife edge polishing wheels in uh four different grits i think we sell them individually but also as an assortment and that edge is also going to allow you to get into tight spots or say up against a guard foot exactly yes this is we usually where i'll use this is right around you know guard feet you know post you know flanges you know, if I were to have soldered this thumb hook, mm -hmm. I would get in there and clean that joint up. 
where any solder may have spilled out. Uh, but these are great, come in a variety of different sizes. And, and the nice thing about these silicone polishing wheels is as you use them, they do tend to get a little dull. You can see here's one that I've used for, oh. for quite a while. It's, it's, it's kind of lost its knife edge, but um, you can actually go in there and, and kind of re-sharpen them. Uh, you can just kind of reform them. You can use a couple different things. Um, I've used a file, a metal file. You can use a sanding stick. Um, if you're careful, you can use a razor blade or a scraper. Anything to bring that dulled edge back to that knife edge where you can get in between the, the braces. Very cool. All right, so we've gone over some different fluxes, some different solders, um, and we've also gone over some some cleaning and polishing for when we're done. Can we do a, do a little hard soldering? Yeah, yet? absolutely. Let's let's do some hard soldering examples here. Um, so what yeah, I've got here for you guys here. is I just have a pad cup and I have a just a post. I'm just going to do kind of just a general soldering of this post on top of this pad cup. You would probably not do this in everyday normal life, but it's for an example. It's for an example here. So, um, so the first thing I, do, I have to do is you can see both of these parts aren't the cleanest. Okay? You have to get down to that bare brass, both parts when you're doing your hard soldering and your soft soldering. Cleanliness is important. So um, for here, I'm just going to use a sanding stick just for, for, for lack of time. Uh, now, and if you had hard to reach areas, you could also just use one of the other products that we just talked Absolutely. about. Absolutely, a bristle disc is perfect for this, for cleaning that surface. Same thing on the bottom of the post. So I clean the very bottom. And then the other thing that I do is I clean the edge. Okay, let's see if I can get real close with that. But I clean the edge of that because when I apply my solder, that's where that solder is gonna to touch the first time. If this edge is dirty, that solder will not flow and it will not stick. Hmm. So it is really important. The two most common mistakes that a lot of people do when they first start soldering is, number one, not enough heat. And then number two, your parts aren't clean. Okay, You cannot just have a, a post pop off and expect to solder it back on where it went without having to do anything. You have to clean the parts very well. And then Ryan, what uh, what flux are you going to be using? I'm going to be using the the creamy brazing flux. This is really what I like using, um, and uh, yeah. So okay. we'll, we'll see. There's a, like I said, there's a couple different options. I can use the paste. I can use the flux core rod. Uh, but my go-to is the creamy brazing flux, and then the easy hard solder wire. Okay. All right. So here we are. I have my post cleaned up. I have my pad cup cleaned up. I'm going to need a way to kind of hold this in place while I do my soldering. So I'm just going to use this little, this little jig here, this little arm to kind of keep everything where it needs to be. Um, before I do that, I'm going to apply some solder. Okay. And you can see this is some flux. You're going to apply. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, thank you. It's the, I'm going to apply my flux and you can see it is more of a paste. So now you were, before we got on today, you were also mixing this up a little. So I was. So as you guys are working with this, be, you know, use some care and take your time to mix it thoroughly before you start using it. Absolutely. Let's see so if here I can we are, apply a little bit of flex to the pad cup, apply a little bit to the bottom of the post. And so and you're I using, set them in place. And you're just using like this third hand to. Just to hold that in place. Yeah. Cause once I start heating this up, there's no going back. There's no touching it. And, it just, it's, it's very difficult once the, the part starts to get very, very hot. Okay. Um, so I'm going to get my torch out. Again, this is a two gas torch. You can see the two tubes running to the handle. Um, this is oxygen and propane. Okay. So we're using the oxygen propane mixture um, for doing hard soldering. So I need to light the propane first this to make You're it gonna use easier. A torch to light another I'm going to use a torch to light a torch. Here we go. So there we are. So now there's a couple of different torch lighters that Ryan can use. We have an automatic torch lighter, which has got a, a yep. battery in it. Um, you've got the old welding style torch. Yep. Doesn't want to cooperate lighter. today. So you've got the propane going. Is yep. that right? So this is the propane. Uh, then I, what I'm going to do is add very slowly the oxygen. And you can see the oxygen really amps that flame up to where it turns into more of that very hot blue flame. And you probably can't hear this on the mic. I'm not going to bring it up because this is very hot, but it's, it's getting a little hiss. It's like a, a tea kettle is about to go off. 
Um, so I know that I'm getting there as far as heat wise, the, uh, the appropriate amount of heat. So I've got my parts jigged up. I have them flexed. I have my solder wire. I have my torch. So now I'm going to go ahead and start to heat things up. Okay. I'm thinking about the larger areas of metal that take a little bit more time to heat up. So I'm really focusing a lot of that heat on the post itself. Not so much the flat, thin pad cup, but I'm heating that, that post, that thicker area of the post. A lot of even heat. Notice how I'm kind of moving it around. What I can do is what I can tell is when it's getting close to time to add the, the solder is this paste flux goes from a kind of a chalky paste and it dries out to like a powder. And you keep heating it up and then that powder will eventually turn back into a liquid and that's what it's doing right now. So I know I'm very, 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 very close and I can see if I can apply just a little bit of flux, maybe a little bit more heat. Notice how I take my flame away. There we go, right there, okay. So you were heating up the parts. I'm heating up the part. And then applying. And then I, I heat up the part, I take the flame away, and then I'm able to, because of that part is heated, um, that's what allows the solder to actually blow. Okay? It's not the flame that's doing the soldering, it's the heat. Okay? In theory, I could put this part in, a, in a, uh, an oven, heat it up to 1400 degrees or whatever the melting temperature of the solder is, uh, take it out and apply my flux to that without any open flame. So it's the heat that is doing the soldering, not the actual open flame. That's a, that's a big, um, one of the, the biggest issues is people applying solder directly to the flame and just having it melt and then drip down uh, and then you have a big solder sculpture. <laughs> so uh, don't do that. Don't do that. So right now those parts are really hot. They are very hot. Is there anything else you do? Do you just let them cool? Do you use something to cool them down with? There's a couple different ways. There's that, that, that controversy on whether or not you, you quench, okay? Which, whether or not you take this and drop it into some water. I like to kind of let things kind of cool down naturally. I'm not that in much of a hurry, um, but if I am and I do need to kind of maybe drop the temperature slightly, uh, I will take a, a Mr. Bottle like this and just right there like that, just to kind of cool it a little bit. Okay, just that way it's it, the, the solder has kind of solidified and that post doesn't move around. But you can see it is still very, very hot. Now, will hard solder, now is hard solder gonna burn lacquer? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's one of those that the burning temperature of lacquer is right around 400 or so degrees. Um, it, the the uh, working temperature of uh, hard solder is right around 1300 degrees. So obviously it will burn lacquer. It's, it's one of those things that even soft soldering, uh, will burn lacquer. Um, uh, but hard soldering will definitely burn lacquer. So unfortunately it's one of those things that you have to do a lot of prep ahead of time. Uh, if you are going to be doing some hard soldering on a lacquered area, I would advise cleaning that lacquer off before you actually go in and solder. Cause if you solder, to um, if you go to hard solder and you actually burn that lacquer, it's very difficult to remove mm. once it's been burnt on and caked on. Uh, you do have to use a lot of times sandpaper to just remove a lot of that burnt on lacquer. So um, it, I've always found that doing a lot of prep ahead of time, uh, you know, making sure your parts are clean, making sure they fit together correctly, making sure the surrounding area is prepped. Uh, so yes, long then, story short, hard soldering will burn lacquer. <laughs> And then, <laughs> and then uh, as far as we've got a question, how much, do you know, how, uh, how much solder do you need for this sort of job? Or, you know, how much, um, is there a way to tell when you're working? Can you see it flowing? You can start to see it flow. Like when I was doing this, this, um, post here. Okay. If we get, if we get real close up to this, um, and I bring it in even closer, I could have actually, I could actually see where the solder would start to come out from underneath the post, letting me know I've used probably enough solder. It, it is a matter of practice. Um, that is another tendency is people will use way too much solder. And when you use way, way too much solder, you get a solder joint that looks like that. You see that big bulbous thing of solder down there. Um, so there is a little bit of practice that needs to happen uh, when it comes to soldering in the correct amount. How, how would you practice? Um, grabbing a bunch of, of old parts, like you can see, I have a lot of old pad cups that I'm here that I've used to solder things. 
um, you know, old keys. You can practice on that, old pieces of brass. Uh, but just get used to your equipment. Get used to the torch that you're going to be using. Um, whatever uh, fluxes and solders that you decide to go with, just get used to those. And then as far as, you know, if, if people are getting into this and they have like, like you have the, the blazer torch there, mm -hmm. can they... Can they solder with something like that? We Now, we know that we can soft solder with this. We did this uh, in the Wednesday video. Mm -hmm. We touched on it, at least. I think we used the, the other torch for it. But um, can they can they use a blazer torch to hard solder? I have never had any good luck. I, there may be uh, some repair techs out there that have been able to hard solder with the blazer torch. But I, myself, my personal experience is I just don't find that this gets hot enough. Again, it, it's, it's like 1,300 degrees. And this, uh, you can do soft soldering with this. And I, I have done soft soldering with these with these blazer hand torches um they a lot of times will get as you can see hot enough with that blue flame to do um soft soldering but for hard soldering you really need a, a, a way more powerful um a torch usually a two tank or a two gas system here we're using oxygen and propane uh you can use oxygen and acetylene um although i i can solder with our our soft soldering setup which is just, you can see the one hose, which is an acetylene, but I have to use a very large tip, hmm. okay, in order to do any kind of hard soldering with just the acetylene torch. Cool. So, yeah. Awesome, Ryan. Well, thank you for demonstrating that for us. If you guys have any other comments or questions, please feel free to let us know. Uh, tune in next Wednesday. We're going to do Wednesday Wisdom with our general manager, Leroy. He's going to be talking about how to measure clarinet pads, and we're going to kind of switch gears and do everything in that world next week. On April 1st, Ryan's going to be doing a precision key fitting course, yeah. and that's going to be on the Music Medic website soon. We also have courses coming up in June where we're going to cover all all sorts of basic techniques like this, uh, including soldering in our Basics Done Right course. I think that is, uh, check the website. That starts in the month of June. We have a course for clarinet and uh, for saxophone. Yeah. Um, so that's going to do it for our Friday product video, uh, our Friday product live today. If you guys have any questions, feel free to contact us. And until next time, happy repairing.